بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيد الأولين والآخرين إمام المتقين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I may apologize for maybe misfiring every now and then because I'm jet lagged. I came all the way from Saudi Arabia. How far is Saudi Arabia? <laughs> so all the way from Saudi Arabia, alhamdulillah. So, but I'm still yani, recovering from uh, the trip. That's why I'm a little bit sleepy. If I sleep in the middle of the lecture, yani, I'm a, an old grumpy grandfather. Wake me up and I'll continue, inshallah. The, Topic is a very, very important topic in our lives. The role model. Now, the topic can be interpreted in many, many different ways. Actually, I don't care about you. I care about myself. And each and every one of you should have the same feeling. Because it's a sign of sincerity that you care for yourself. Would you like to be a bridge on top of hellfire connecting the two edges where people walk on your back to safety? Would you like to do this? Yes. What will happen? People will go to safety, but you will burn. <laughs> You're the one who's burning. I don't care about people going to safety. The hell with them all. Seriously. I just want to be saved. I want to be the one who makes it. This is why the role model is not something that you work for. And this is something that the youth, a lot of the youth don't pay attention to. Sheikh, how can I be a famous da'i like you? Don't. If this is your intention, to be a famous da'i, stay home. Don't. Because this is not something you work for. Rather, this is a byproduct. Now, one of the greatest favors and blessings of Allah Azza wa upon us is that He guided us to Islam. And this ni'mah we never contemplate or think about. When you see the amount of misguidance in the world, and you look in the mirror, what do you say? Allahumma lakal hamd. When you see people dancing in nightclubs, partying all night long, drinking like a fish, smoking like a chimney, doing something like a rabbit, what do you do? What do you say? Ya Rabbi lakal hamd. You've selected me, you've guided me. The greatest ni'mah upon us is that we're Muslims, is that we pray in the masjid, is that we make our adhkar, is that we wash our limbs five times a day. And the Prophet والسلام, is one of this, these greatest favors and blessings. Allah selected the best of the best and he sent him to us to be our teacher, our mentor, to be our role model. He, alayhi salatu was salam, <coughs> is the one whom we're ordered to follow his footsteps. Allah says in the Quran, There has certainly been for you in the messenger of Allah an excellent pattern a role model for anyone who hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. This excellent pattern, this role model is what you follow, what you take as an example in everything he does, in everything he says. And a role model can be good and can be bad. And this is why Allah says, Azza wa Jal, 
an excellent pattern. He specifically, uswatun hmm, hasana. Because there is uswatun sayyia. So Allah specifically described him to be a good pattern, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Now, taken into consideration, every human being by nature, every one of us, is prone and designed to take a role model, whether you like it or not. Every one of us has this built inside mechanism. Who should I follow? Who should I mimic? Who should I try to imitate? And everything. And if you look on the way we dress, on the way we speak, on the way we eat, on our hobbies, even when you play sport, those who play football, if they accidentally score a goal, yeah, this happens once every blue moon, sometimes in their own goal, but let's not yeah, go into details. If you score a goal, you find yourself doing some gestures like a famous footballer, a striker. Some of them crawl on four limbs, some of them fall on their chest, some of them do this, some, I don't know. I don't watch this nonsense, alhamdulillah. I don't have time and I hate a game where 20 adults run after a ball. Yeah, they fight for a ball. Yeah, he buy each one of them a ball and <laughs> go home and give them a cookie, they will go away. Why fight over a ball? But, and I, but this is a game. They like it, khalas, alhamdulillah. So, those who are weak need a role model that is strong. And whenever you imitate someone, it shows your vulnerability and weakness, and it shows the strength of the one you follow. And this is how the disbelievers were when their messengers called them to Islam. They called them, come follow the right religion, follow the scriptures from Allah Azza wa Jal. What did they say? They say, as Allah says in the Quran, and similarly, we did not send before you any warner into a city, except that its affluent said, indeed, we found our forefathers upon a religion and we are in their footsteps following. So they rejected the truth because of their imitation of their role model. Who was their role model? Their fathers, their forefathers, their ancestors. This is what destroyed them and prevented them from going and following the truth. Look at your uncles, look at your aunts, look at your elders in the family. Uncle, what you're doing is haram, it's shirk. You're going to dargas, you're uh, uh, asking peers for help, you're going to soothsayers to tell you about the, for, uh, the, the, the future. And they say, no, 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 they know. We found our parents, our grandparents following this, we're following. Now we Muslims are different because Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who guided us. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, and they will say, praise to Allah, alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihada. Who has guided us to this? And we would never have been guided if Allah not guide us. You think you're here because you're strong? You have muscles? You have intellect? It's only a gift from Allah. Allah chose you. Allah selected you. Now what are you going to do with this gift? Are you gonna be grateful? Are you gonna pursue it further and increase it and make it flourish? Or are you gonna put it in the drawer and watch it being reduced and diminished until it's gone? Now we <clears throat> always praise Allah Azza wa Jal that he sent us the cream of the cream. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sent us the best messenger so that we would take him as a role model. Allah told us 
to take him as an excellent pattern and a role model. And he himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, ordered us to do this. So many hadiths. One, sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as if you seen me pray. Now people pray in different ways. Some put their hands on their sides. Some put them under their belly. Some put them above their belly. Some put them at, you know, choke hold. <laughs> what are you doing, Akhi? So this is good for khushur, Sheikh. <laughs> Come on, please. This is uh, MMA. You know, where did you get this from? So where do we get our prayer from? From him, alayhi salatu wasalam. We pray as if we had seen him pray. Did we see him pray? No, but the companions told us. Wa'il ibn Hujr says, the Prophet used to put the right hand on the left hand on the chest. The chest is from here to here, but definitely not here. And definitely not on your private part. <laughs> I've seen people praying like, Akhi, what are you, a goalie? Yeah, someone is, go is going to shoot a, a goal at you and you're protecting your uh, uh, crown jewels. <laughs> it's not going to help you. Follow the sunnah. He also said, you may not see me after today. This is in the farewell hajj. So take after me your rituals. How to perform hajj, how to throw the pebbles, how to go to Arafah, Muzdalifa, to Mina, blah, blah, blah. All of this you take from me. Why? Because he's the excellent pattern and the role model. And if you go to his sunnah, alayhi salatu wasalam, show me one little defect in him. You will never find. Show me something that is bad or negative. Never you can find something like that. And no one on earth can be like this, except him, alayhi salatu wasalam. If you went to war, he was the bravest. Although he was over 50. He's in middle 50s and above. Whenever it got tough, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the greatest of all warriors, said, when the tough started to materialize, we used to cover, take cover behind the Prophet We would say, oh, I would protect the Prophet with my body. Well, <laughs> Ali said he used to be behind him. Because when you see death coming, all of these bravery and words would vanish. And subhanAllah, in Fajr, <laughs> we see this in Fajr. In my masjid, once we were praying Fajr, and the Imam's beautiful voice, khushur, mashaAllah. Very nice, you know, when Fajr is quiet, and all of a sudden, we started seeing people jumping and hitting the ceiling because of a cockroach. <laughs> Where is your bravery? Where is your jihad? A cockroach came and everybody was jumping and shouting. Khalas, no salah, no khushur. So what do you expect if this was in the battlefield? Oh, I will protect the Prophet with my life. You won't do that. You will start to look at the closest exit in fire escape to run away except those يعني, whom Allah Azzawajal has blessed Ali says we used to take him as a shield our cover because it was so fierce Jazakallah khair Barakallah fiq and if you look at how he dealt with others alayhi salatu wasalam he was the peak in forgiveness and pardoning Imagine you walking in peace and somebody all of a sudden startles you from behind. You're not waiting. You're not someone coming from in front of you. Someone from behind you grabs you from the back, pulls your cloak or whatever you're wearing so that it scratches your skin and leaves traces. It's hurtful. Not only that, he says to him, Ya Muhammad, Oh, Muhammad, give me from the money you have. It's not your money. It's Allah's money. So he talks to me like this. Ya Asim, are you crazy? You, I'm Sheikh Asim. What are you saying? He talks to Muhammad, والسلام, the greatest man ever to walk the earth. He says, Ya Muhammad. 
And he says, give me from the money you have. It's not your money. It's Allah's money. What kind of disrespect is this? If I had a sword, I would have taken his head off. What did the Prophet do, alayhi wasalam? He's our role model. He was the excellent pattern. He looked at him, smiled, and ordered his companions to give him money. End of story. Now, how many times do we deal like this with our wives when they speak loudly to us or disrespect us? How many times do we do this with an ignorant imbecile while driving? He does this to us. This is okay, huh? No pixelation. It's okay. So, what do we do? How much tolerance do we have? He's our role model. He is the one who we learn from. Alayhi salatu was salam. Generosity. Sheikh, I need money. I don't, I don't have my wallet. It's in the hotel. So nobody comes and says, Sheikh, I, you just spoke about generosity. Give me this. I don't have my wallet. Sheikh, you have Apple Watch. Can we have uh, Apple Pay? No, that's, uh, it's in Riyadh. So it's not in Dinar. Look at the generosity of the Prophet. After the Battle of Hanin, Hunayn, Hanin, Hunayn in Taif, he was standing on top of a hill and a nomad, a Bedouin, random person comes and stands next to him and there was a herd of sheep filling up the valley. Yeah, 3,000, 2,000 sheep. Imagine how much that would cost in Hajj. A lot of adahi, qurbani. So the man, you know, with, with his jaw dropping, looked, and the Prophet looked at him, alayhi salam, and said, you like this? The nomad said, yes. The Prophet said, it's yours. The man did not even ask. Come on, guys. What kind of generosity is this? And how much do we do the same? People have to beg us for sadaqah. People have to beg us for our duty. They have to bake food to bring it and sell it so that we can take the money to Gaza. True? They have to work so that they can extract some money from us. The Prophet gives it without what? This is, he's our role model. And you would expect with all this wealth that he would have like a Bugatti, you know, Armani suit. He has a Rolex. He has this. How did he live, alayhi salatu wasalam? Ya Allah. Did he go every year to Geneva to spend three weeks? Or to the Côte d'Azur, Cannes, Nice, Monaco, Monaco, to spend the summer? Did he travel for vacation? He lived, wallahi, we can't live like him. But why? Because he is the role model. He walks the talk. He's the real deal, alayhi salatu wasalam. And food would not be cooked in his house in the nine wives' houses for two months. No cooking, no fire is lit. What did they eat? Water and dates. And maybe somebody would give them a gift, a glass of milk, that they would all share it. This is how he lived. If he wanted, he could have had the whole place made of gold. All that he has to do is ask, but no. I'm a servant prophet, not a king prophet. He was given the choice, alayhi salatu was salam. He used to sleep on a mattress made of tanned hide, filled with palm fibers. Imagine sleeping on something that has a sound of cracking branches. And it's hide, leather. It's not cotton or silk or something soft. This is his pillow, his mattress. And his thobe was to the middle of his feet, his legs. 
You know how short that is? This is the knee, this is the foot. His thobe was to this much. Yani really, really short. And he used to tell his companions, uplift your garment, it's too long. It's below your ankles. And they would say, oh, Prophet of Allah, it's an old garment. He says, don't you have a role model example in me? The companion says, so I looked and I found it to the middle of his legs, alayhi salatu wasalam. So he himself used to give an example by himself to the others. He used to say, the best of you is the best to his wives. Those best of you are the best to their wives and I am the best to my wives. So he's telling us, I am the role model. Take me as an example, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nevertheless, he told us that there will be a generation that will come after him that are going astray. They choose other than his sunnah. They speak other than what he says. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, there is no prophet whom Allah sent to any nation before me, but he had disciples and companions from among his nation who followed his path and obeyed his commands. Then, after them came generations who said what they did not do and did what they were not commanded to do. Whoever strives against them with his hand is a believer. Whoever strives against them with his tongue is a believer. Whoever strives against them with his heart is a believer. Beyond that, there is not even a mustard seed's worth of faith. Those who go against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the way of the Prophet ﷺ, our role model must be fought, either with the hand or with the tongue or with the heart. So, as a Muslim, it is not enough for us to follow the Prophet والسلام, full stop. We have to go the extra mile. I think we have to turn this off or run this off. The one the whistling. The microphones, I think we, we have to turn them off. It's a commercial break. Okay, so a Muslim strives to go the extra mile. How? Yes, we follow the Prophet والسلام, to the letter, step by step. But we are ambitious that we become also role models to others. Why? You remember the hadith, the Prophet says alayhi salatu wasalam, man sanna sunnatan hasana falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha. The Prophet says alayhi salam, whoever sets a good precedent in Islam will have the reward for that and the reward for those who do it after him without that detracting from the rewards in the slightest. What does this mean? Each one of us has to be a devout follower of the Prophet ﷺ. This is a given. But each one of us has to also aspire to be better than that. In the sense, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ hmm. Imama. Allah says, and those who say, our Lord, grant us from among our wives and offspring comfort to our eyes and make us an example for the righteous. Make us a leader for the righteous. You want to become an imam for those who are righteous. And look at the interpretation of this ayah by Imam al-Bukhari in the Sahih. He said, make us leaders that people we follow so that others would follow us. We follow whom? The Prophet ﷺ, the companions, the tabi'een, the tabi'i tabi'een, the salaf al-salih. We follow them, but you will never be an imam 
until you follow so that people would follow you. If you find someone being followed by the masses, that's good, mashallah, he's a good imam. Look at whom he's following. If you find that he's following Prophet Muhammad, Sahaba, Tabi'een, and Tabi'i Tabi'een, you know that he's an imam. But if he's following someone else, he's not following the Salaf, then he's not an imam, because you can't be an imam until you follow those who were actual imams. Our children, when they open their eyes at a young age, they follow their parents. And usually a son or a daughter is a reflection to the house. Rarely you will find a father who smokes and his children do not smoke. Rarely. They must have tried it in their lives, if not continued to it, because he was their role example. And the biggest problem is that we have a conflict of interest in the household, in the Muslim household. The father says something, the mother says something, they're fighting, they're always arguing, and who's watching? The children. And who's being negatively affected? The children. Allah says in the Quran about Prophet Shu'ib. Shu'ib says to his people, وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ And this is the cornerstone of da'wah. He says, and I do not intend to differ from you in that which I have forbidden you. I don't tell you to do something and I do the opposite. This is the worst da'wah you could ever present. How would you learn from a shaykh, a da'i, who's teaching you Quran and sunnah while sitting next to a woman and chit-chatting and cracking jokes? She's a da'i as well, by the way. What kind of da'wah? What am I missing? Why, why they, do they all get the good things and I get Sheikh Haji Rafiq? <laughs> Say, give me a break. So they sit in conferences and crack jokes with women and, Akhi, what is this? Oh, Sheikh, it's a different time, different era, different da'wah. This is not an imam who does this. You are going against the basics of Quran and Sunnah. How can I learn from you? You have to walk the talk. You have to be at the forefront of interpreting the Quran and the Sunnah, not to go against it. And I do not intend to differ from you in that which I have forbidden you. If we look at our households, we will find catastrophes. We have failed miserably in upbringing our children, unfortunately. We've never been role models for them. Yes, we might have been a role model in one aspect, but deep down in their hearts, when they see us fail miserably in 99% of other aspects, this good aspect would go down the drain. If I tell them, uh, be truthful, and I'm truthful, but at the same time, I abuse my wife, and I lie to my work, and I cheat, and I miss salah in, in the masjid, and I watch haram stuff, and I smoke, and I do this, and I do that. Everything that Islam is telling me, I'm doing the opposite. So when it comes to only be truthful, might as well. It's a wholesale. No, it's a package deal. For you as a parent, it's not an easy task to be done. Raising children is not something you put in the microwave like popcorn in two minutes you get it, mashallah, done. No, it has to be marinated. It has to be put in the oven at 400 degrees and it has to be checked every three, four hours and until the meal is good. And unfortunately, we're the worst. A girl's 
they are raised in a house where the mother doesn't abide by the hijab. There is free mixing with her cousins, with her in-laws. There is uh, not praying on time, wearing uh, 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 nail polish and making wudu on it. What is this? Eh, it's okay, it's okay. So how can they be ever committed to the religion? When the father himself, he cheats in his business, he lies and he gives lame excuses. When he lies and he knows his children know that he's lying. When he doesn't pray, when he doesn't go to the masjid except for Jum'ah and rarely when he swears and curses and uses profanity and he always tells his children, hey, no, you should not say this. This is taboo. You're saying it all day long. You are saying it all day long. You are the role model. What do you expect? This is what we have in our homes. And the problem does not stop here. It's not limited to our homes. Let's look at our community, at society. When the ruler does this, when the judge cheats and takes money and bribes, when the CEO of the company signs deals under the table, when the supervisor tells you to hush hush and gives you a commission and takes commission from himself and the company is losing money. When the athlete who everyone looks up to does this. When a, an artist, whether an actor, whether an artist or someone of a celebrity status does this, these are all role models that the society look up to them and respect. And this is the biggest problem because Allah Azza wa Jal divided rulers, well, divided leaders, imams. وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. Al imam in the Quran is divided into two types. Allah says, <clears throat> and we made from among them leaders guiding by our command when they were patient and when they were certain of our signs. Good imams or bad? Well, people are asleep. Take some coffee. Black coffee is good, Tara. It wakes you up. See? I've just read an ayah. And everybody... Huh? I read it again. And we made from among them leaders guiding by our command when they were patient and when they were certain of our signs. These imams are good or bad? They're good, mashallah. Now, <clears throat> listen to this second ayah. And we made them leaders inviting to the fire. And on the day of resurrection, they will not be helped. Good or bad? But Allah called them what? Imam. So both are imams. Every one of us is an imam, whether you like it or not. So you, when you come to the masjid and study Quran and teach the youngsters Al-Fatiha and try to participate in the activities of the community in Islamic uh, uh, way, you're an imam. And if you sit home or with gatherings and teach the brother how to play guitar and how to play piano or how to play poker or how to download illegal movies, you're an imam. But what kind of an imam? So at the end of the day, I think I took more than my time. At the end of the day, what is your legacy that you will leave behind? How long are you going to live? Seriously. The problem is, look at me. I am old, but I feel young. Why? Because the older I get, the more deeply rooted my roots in the ground. When I was 50 years ago, you could have taken me from the ground and I would have died, no regrets. I had no fear of death. Now my roots are so deep. If you want to uproot me, take me out of my roots, 
difficult. I don't want to leave. So what is your legacy? You are going to die. Since when? Hmm. Since Allah brought you to this life, since your mother gave birth to you, she gave birth to you to do what? To die. No one lives forever. When are you going to die? Uncle, you're 90. When are you going to die? Oh, I've heard of Nuh. He lived like 950. So, yeah, another couple of hundred years. SubhanAllah. When is it where you sit, relax and say, Alhamdulillah, I live my life. I'm just waiting for an SMS to come and خلاص, leave. When? So what is the legacy are you, you're going to leave behind? Who among your children you anticipate to be an imam of the Muslims? What will your colleagues at work say? Uh, Abdullah died. <gasps> ya Sheikh. Yeah, he died yesterday. Ya Alhamdulillah. He used to spend two hours in Dhuhr Salah. He, he never worked, Akhi. He used to leave at 10 o'clock. Where are you going? He said, make wudu. And he comes at 1 o'clock. Where have you been? I was doing sunnah for Dhuhr. <laughs> Three hours, Akhi. What is this? Even taraweeh can't be that long. He never worked good. He, he was nothing. Some people die, and you hear of them, uh, so-and-so died. Who's he? Oh, he was our neighbor. He used to pray in the masjid. We never heard of him. What are his achievements? Zero. Nothing. So yes, you can be rich. You can be a good businessman. You can be an entrepreneur. You could be a good athlete. What is your legacy that you anticipate to be with you in your grave? Diego Maradona. Oh, Sheikh, one of the best footballers of all times. What is his legacy? He's a footballer. Then what? Khalas, ma'asalama. End of game. We Muslims don't have this. One of the brothers was saying to me once, Ya khi, alhamdulillah, my grave is fully furnished. Alhamdulillah, there are lights, air conditions, and a small refrigerator, and it's cozy, it's very nice. All what I'm just waiting for is to plug the electricity. My grave is filled. Why? He said, I've been giving da'wah, I've been distributing Quran, I was feeding orphans in Africa, I was doing charity work, and I do Qiyam al layl all for Allah Azza wa And he's sincere. But he's joking when he says, my grave is fully furnished. Akhi, what will you find in your grave? How many DVDs? Oh, you guys are young, but you don't know DVDs. <laughs> now, downstream, Sheikh. How many movies you've seen? How many songs you've downloaded? How many haram you've done? How many uh, 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 people you've cheated? How much money have you consumed of bribes, stealing, lying? And you go to bed, sleep like a baby. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do anything. Allah knows, Allah knows. This is the biggest problem that Allah knows. So what have you done? What is your real legacy? So my point is, so that we can, inshallah, conclude our session. Are you a role model? Yes or no? And if it is yes, are you a role model and an imam to goodness and to paradise? Or the latter? May Allah protect us. Hada wallahu alam wa nisbatul ilmi alayhi aslam. Allahumma ja'alni wa ikhwani ma'immatan lil muttaqeen. اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اجعلنا هداة مهتدين عالمين عاملين مخلصين اللهم ولا تخزنا في الدنيا ولا يوم الدين وصل اللهم وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين